Hi everyone, welcome back to our short videos on business studies in the topic of motivation. I hope you are able to cover or manage to pick up a thing or two from the video so far. Today's lesson will be about financial motivators. Okay, so what is motivation? In case you're wondering, we have covered this in a couple of videos back, but let's go through it again. Motivation is basically the reasons or factors that makes us do certain things that go out of our way to achieve them, right? And we are in topic of financial motivators, basically looking at what are the financially, uh, well, the methods that can be used financially to motivate people, right? Because some of us look at money as a motivator because we want to, of course, use money to buy things. And when we can make more money, that makes us happier to do things, right? So that's what we're going to look at today, the different types of financial motivators. Okay, let's look at the various financial motivators that we'll be covering in our class today. They will be the piece rate method, the time-based rate method, right? Pay, paying people through commission, okay? Paying bonuses, salary, right? Performance-related pay, and finally, profit sharing. Okay, now first up, piece rate method. So the piece rate method is basically payment being made for each output produced. Basically those days in factories and even now for that matter, all right, uh, people do get paid for the amount of item that they produce, for each item they produce. So this of course means that when they produce more items, they will be making more money. Okay, and basically this would be very motivating because for some people they would be wanting to actually produce more, to make more, and this will encourage productivity. Okay, however, with piece rate methods, there are also some disadvantages such as decrease in quality because as people who people who continue working hard to produce more and more they may tend to slack off a little bit in terms of making sure that the item is produced up to its highest quality right at the same time employees who are careful and tedious in producing items like this may take a longer time to produce an item right and that means they may not be making as much money as those who are producing it in a very fast manner okay at the same time some employees may choose to just produce up to a certain amount or certain quota because that's the only amount of money that they want to make for the day so there you go some of the benefits and the limitations using piece rate system to motivate employees right now let's look at time base rate now time base rate on the other hand is paid based on the hours worked right so this is quite usually done when you work on a part-time basis for starbucks and things like that where you are get, getting paid ten dollars a day or ten dollars an hour all right for each hour worked okay and of course with the more hours put in more money is received and of course it is used when output is not easy to measure for example in working in starbucks you're not really looking at how many coffees you make all right so it's based on a time-based method and for those employees who do not pull in their weight or who are hardworking and lazy, they get paid the same, right? For the same amount as those hardworking people who clock in more hours to do more, right? And this is quite tedious because employers may need to monitor employees to ensure that they're actually working, right? And these could be some of the challenges faced when we speak about time-based rate. Okay, now what's next? We have commission, okay? So a commission-based method is basically a thing where employees get paid based on each sale they make, right? To sell a particular item, they make a sale and someone buys from them and so they get commission, right? So this is one of the payment methods as well. So of course, a way to motivate them themselves is to make more sales. With more sales, there's more money received. And usually for commission, um, you know, based payments, there is no basic salary given, right? Because the whole idea is com of commission is that to really, uh, you know, increase sales and to really attract employees to make more money for themselves is to sell more, all right? So 
this encourages uh, you know employees to actually hit their target so they make more money for that month than than not right this could be quite a challenge as well okay because in making lots and lots of sales sometimes the quality of the sales could not be maintained because it's pushing a sale to a customer for the sake of making the commission right at the same time in terms of commission it is affected by the sales made, right? If there are no sales made, then that employee would not be making any money for that month, okay? So this is quite a challenge in terms of, you know, uh, employees who are getting paid based on commission. And at the same time, this may cause team friction based on the aggressiveness to sell, to make more money among it, the team themselves, right? You'll find them competing with each other and, you know, to, to really make the most in terms of sales, right? And within the team, sometimes there are team targets set for the sales of the month. And this could be quite stressful for those who are not making a sale because they would have to, you know, own up or they will have to really push themselves to compete with team members who are actually making sales. So it could be uh, quite of a demotivation as well for employees who do not make sales at all. Okay, so those are some of the challenges when, you know, commission uh, payment system is used to pay employees, okay? And what we have next is bonus. I think you would have heard of the word bonus before, all right? Now, what is a bonus, all right? It's a lump sum payment received when workers have worked well. So companies do give payouts to employees based on their discretion, of course, right? When workers in general is doing well or the company is doing well in terms of their sales, their targets, the profits met. Okay, now this encourages motivation because, of course, based on you know how an employee perform, those who perform better may be getting a higher bonus amount. Okay, and it's of course it is paid paid at the discretion of the company. Therefore, it's not an obligation for each company to give bonuses to their employees every single year. Right. At the same time, for those employees who are not really, you know, pulling in their weight, they would still be getting a minimum amount as the company's token of appreciation for the year. Okay, and this would definitely cause some friction among team members who feel that this, they deserve a higher payout compared to those compared to those sorry, who do not put in their weight at all and whom they think do not deserve a bonus at all. All right, we have so far concluded four types of financial motivators. Let's look at the fifth one, and this is quite known to all of you, salary, okay? So salary is basically payment made monthly to employees. So you have full-time workers in an organization, and they get paid a basic salary, and it's paid at the end of the month, all right? This, fixed, this is normally a fixed amount, all right? Paid to skilled workers. We're talking about managers, executives, and so forth, and they get paid salary okay it is normally a stable income It's unlike commission which does not depend on sales huh? so it's a stable income received month on month and not dependent on the hours worked as well okay so of course contractually on uh, you know on paper there would be a, spe a specified amount of hours need to, that an employee needs to serve for a particular month right having said that the stable income is given to ensure that, you know, regardless of the delivery of output of the employee, they would still receive the amount of salary that has been agreed. Okay. Now, however, uh, in terms of increasing the salary, that would be another issue altogether because normally companies would subscribe to, you know, appraisal methods or performance management system to really gauge an employee's performance and decide the quantum or the amount of increase that uh, an employee can be given, right? And the salary increase is normally given uh, on a yearly basis, all right? So it's once a year at best, okay? And the percentage of 5 or 10% is dependent upon how the employee performs throughout the year, okay? Now, let's look at another method called performance-related pay. Now, performance-related pay is payment made to employees based on their performance, right? Purely on their performance, okay? So the better they perform, they will be getting a higher compensation, all right? And at the same time, this creates competition among employees to excel because, well, everyone wants a bigger 
their piece of the pie, all right? So they do their best to perform excellently, so they get a higher amount because this is, this is basically paid based on their performance, all right? And as usual, in situations like this, it will cause friction because if not all members are motivated by money and some of them are and some of them don't and if this is if it's a team effort that leads towards the performance rated pay then well there would definitely cause a bit of a friction okay and in, to ensure that the, the performance related uh, system is managed carefully where everyone is you know receiving the amount justly and fairly this is normally monitored through a performance appraisal which means using a method to actually ensure that the targets that is set is achieved by the employee to show their performance and there is a way to measure it before they get that performance related pay or that payment based on their performance Our final uh, financial motivator is profit sharing. Now, profit sharing is payment made to employees when their employers make a profit. So some companies, on top of the basic salary and things like that, they also offer profit sharing to their employees. Okay, And this basically means when the company makes profit, they actually share that profit with each and every employee. Okay, so that's basically what it really means. Okay, and it's shared because to ensure that you know that to show their gratitude and you know their appreciation to to workers who really put in their efforts to actually make sure that the company can go the extra mile and achieve the profit that they have. Okay, so it motivates employees to push themselves as they become accountable to the profits, almost like owners of the company. So employees who enjoy profit sharing from the company feel as if they are a part of the company in terms of having that ownership. Therefore, they motivate themselves even further to do more and think like owners of the business to, in order to ensure that the company achieves higher profits. Okay, and as usual, when you have team working towards the same goal, but not everyone pulling their weight the same way, then this may cause friction among them because the amount received for, for everyone is the same, regardless of whether they pull their weight or not, right? So that could be a bit of a, you know, there could be a level of dissatisfaction among them. Okay, now, there you go. We have concluded, um, you know, the topics so far uh, on financial motivation and this is a chapter where or a, or a slide where we look at what are the things that you're able to take home from today's lessons okay i hope you have understood and able to explain what are the financial motivators and you understand the differences between each financial motivator and when it will be suitable to be used right or based on its suitability This means that we are at the end of our lesson. And if you have questions for today's class, please send them to teach at savage.com.my. Um, I will be preparing the next video soon in the next couple of days. Stay tuned to this channel. Subscribe, like, share, comment if you must. Thank you so much and have a great, great day.